blessings to you all on this Sabbath day, church. Amen. This is that part of the time where we get to do our part to help spread the gospel. Okay, this is an ordinance that the Lord has ordained that all of us should participate in. So as I read these words, I hope you consider carefully to want to do your part for the Lord out of the goodness and love for him from your heart. Okay. I want to read, we are all familiar with the story about the rich young ruler who came before Jesus. And the Bible says he was dealing before him, taking my word from Matthew. And I'm going to look at chapter 19. And I'm going to start with verses uh, 16. And it says here, Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what thing, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? This is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important questions that Jesus was asked in his ministry. What must I do, okay, to have eternal life? Okay, Jesus replied to this young man, says, First he says, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments, okay? And he said to him, which one? Jesus says, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your mother and father, and you shall uh, love your neighbor as yourself. You want to concentrate and bring out that statement where he says, you shall not steal. Okay? Whenever we are called to this part of the service, the Lord is taking note on who he has blessed with the funds to give back to his cause. Okay? Because this ordinance here has been given to us by God to help us with our selfish nature. Okay? So God gives the, this ordinance of returning tithes and offerings to him has to show our appreciation to him as to what he has been, he has done for us, okay? And I don't want my record in the books of heaven to, where I come out and be classified as someone who has been robbing God, okay, of what is rightfully belongs to him, all right? So, verse 20, he would, the uh, young man replies, he says to him, all these things I have done, what like I yet? Jesus says to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come follow me. Mm. Now in this story, it is considered here that, you know, some have said that this is the man who kept it all. So consider this, it says, this may be one of the most challenging stories and all the scriptures to interpret. Yet that isn't, that hasn't stopped generations of preachers from condemning the young man in it for rejecting Jesus' invitation to sell everything he had and give the proceeds to the poor. It is doubly ironic that in spite of all the sermons we've heard that are based on this story, we still leave church with the same financial resources that we did when we parked our cars in the church parking lot this morning. See, here's the thing. Jesus doesn't want our money. He wants us. Amen. Amen. We can sell everything and go around wearing clothes that was made out of newspapers, but that by itself won't get us any closer to Christ. What God says in the Old Testament, which is coming from Malachi 3.10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, the unspoken implication was that he was inviting his people to be partners with him by using the other 90% to live in harmony with heavenly principles. Now, here's something to consider. And contrary to the opinion of uh, some, poor disciples are not better disciples. Rather, we all blessed with material possessions so we can live to bless others. There are rich people as well as poor people who use all their disposable income to serve their own selfish desires. There are also wealthy people, such as Bill Gates and Melinda Gates, 
who have given more to charity than most of us will ever see in our lifetimes. And consider this story here. It says here, it says here, an old pioneer at a local church leader was famous for having two compartments in his wallet. One was for the Lord and the other was for himself. After working hard all day in the fields, he would collect his pay from his employer. As soon as he received it, he would divide his earnings. Part of it went into his compartment for the Lord and the other part went into the compartment for himself. The man made a deep impression on a young teenager named Arthur G. Daniels, who later became the president of the General Conference. What an example. We too can be encouraged and blessed as we give to support the work of God's church. Right here in our local conference, thank you for your faithfulness and, and your participation each Sabbath in this work in sharing the gospel. Now may the deacons come. Collective ties and offerings. 